Hello, and welcome to another Woody Devs video. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you a cool little trick that you can use to blend poses together to be able to create cool little animation tricks like this. If I press a button here, I can drop in my little stream screen. Now, this is really cool. I've covered how to make stream screens in the past. I got another video about it. For the most part, I don't have too many updates other than that you should probably use DirectX 11 RHI. I'm here to show you specifically how we make this really cool transition. If I look up at my ceiling here, you can see I'm running this transition using an animated method. How do we do that? Well, luckily, I already have a little bit of a setup in Unreal Engine. This is really exciting. I feel like this is a great tutorial because this is something you can use for games, for VTubers, for whatever you want, really. So I already brought in my skeletal mesh here, and here's a better look at it. I've got a string of bones here that are all interconnected. I made this in Blender, but you can make it in whatever you want. I've got some other videos about rigging too, if you're curious about that. And uh, you can see here, I can kind of manipulate it and stuff. I like it, it's pretty fun. It's always a little bit counterintuitive because you end up selecting the bone that is attached to the bone you want to edit. I'm not exactly sure why. I set up my weight painting so that I can do little rotations, basically whatever I want. Now, I'll save this asset, but you'll notice that nothing actually really gets saved. If I open it again, everything's back to normal. So what would I do if I wanted to save a little bit of a pose? Well, it's pretty easy. I'm gonna go ahead and start by moving all of my poses exactly where I want. Try to get them tight here. And I'll make one that's a little bit compressed like this. Now I'm gonna go to create asset and I'm gonna go to create pose asset and I'm gonna use current pose. And it's gonna ask me for a folder. You can save it wherever you want. I'm gonna save it here with the rest of my stuff just for the sake of this tutorial. It's not how you would wanna do it on a real project. Here's our pose asset. So when I first started trying to save pose assets, I was really freaking out quite a bit about how the whole thing works. The first time I clicked on one, it just kind of like gave me this. And I'm like, well, that's not the pose that I wanted. I just made a pose. Like you actually have to increase the pose value based on this thing here. So it has a name. You can rename this if you want to. You press F2 or right click on it and hit rename. You can name it something important that you'll remember like folded. And that's great. And that's really all there is to it. Between the folded and the, the just hanging here, that's actually all the transitions I have. But I'm gonna go ahead and make one more just for fun. I'll go back to my original here. As you can see, it's reset itself entirely. And then I'm just gonna make a like a little wacky extra pose that does something funky just to maintain our sense of humor. I'm gonna do the same thing. Create pose asset from current pose and I'll save it to Steam screen. Stream screen. <laughs> Steam deck, stream deck, same thing, right? And if I turn this one up, you can see what I just got here. Super cool. All right, and I'm gonna name this funny fold. Okay, awesome, great. Now, how do we tie that all together? To do that, I'm gonna need an animation blueprint. That's really simple. All you gotta do is click here and go to Anim Blueprint. I'm gonna name this Screen Switcher and I'm gonna save it. I'll open it up. And now I've got a blank scene here. When you wanna switch between animation states is you make a state machine. However, there are other ways in Unreal to do this that don't take quite as much setup time and are maybe a little bit more effective for simple stuff like this. Let's go ahead and bring in our stream screen assets. You're gonna find it over here in the asset browser. I'm gonna grab one of these and I'm just gonna pop them down, but we have to do a little bit with these before we can use them. First of all, right click and you wanna go down to convert pose by name. And you'll notice that changes the shape of things here. So the pose name will be sitting here. We can change it to what we want. So I'm gonna name this folded and I can also expose this as a pin if I really want to which can be very helpful if you want to program things a little bit more or pipe some data in there. You've also noticed that I've made a mistake already. I have named everything really poorly, right? So I can't tell the difference between these two skeletal assets, at least by the name of their assets. So let's go back and fix that. I've got two here, this one's folded. So I'm gonna name it folded. And this one by process of elimination is our funny fold. Open our animation blueprint. If I make any change, basically, it's gonna confirm what I thought. I'm gonna click convert pose by name again gonna name this folded. And now if I just plug this straight in to the output pose, I should get a result that looks pretty good. Yep, that's what I expected to see. Do the same thing over here, convert to pose by name and funny fold. If I switch it over and compile, you can see I got the other one. So we can use this node I really like. I've really come to enjoy this node. I think it's great. Right click and go blend poses by int. You can use bool too, but the int's a little bit more flexible. Now what this will let you do is you can blend between these poses. You've got 
your different poses, you've got the amount of time it takes to do the blend, and then you have the active child index, which is basically saying which pose are we gonna blend between. If you right click, there's actually a really good piece of documentation here about all the different kinds of blending nodes that you can use. It's definitely worth a read. Let's wire all of this up. When we hit play, it should go back to our regular folded, and that's fine. If we change it to one and compile it, it'll go back to the other. However, because we're not running anything in a scene, we're not seeing the transition times. Just to exaggerate the effect, I'm gonna make these two seconds long, so you're able to really see them when we change them. But we're far from done. If we wanna make anything that will change this, we gotta do a little bit more first. Before we proceed, I need a way for our blueprints to talk to each other. It's gonna get a little tricky, so we'll use everybody's favorite. We're gonna right click, go to blueprint, and get blueprint interface. I've got this new function zero, I'm gonna rename this to toggle, screen. It's going to help a ton. And before I'm done with this, I'm going to click on it and I'm going to add an integer here. Quick little integer. You can name it whatever you want and save. Let's make sure we have access to this inside our animation blueprint. You can be either in the event graph or in the animation graph and you can go over and click class settings. Over here in interfaces, you'll see we don't have anything hooked up. So I'm going to start typing BPI underscore screen interface. So now we have access to that. Make sure you've saved and compiled your interface. And when you compile your animation blueprint, you should have toggle screen right here. Let's press implement event. You can also just double click it. Let's promote this to a variable. And we can just call this pose to pick, or you can call it whatever you like. Now I could grab pose to pick and I could plug it in like this, or I can save a little bit of time in animation blueprint by just right clicking and I can click on the binding here and just grab pose to pick and then it'll just add it down below. And technically we have everything that we need to run our animation right now. However, there's something missing. I'm gonna add one more blend pin here. Click add blend pin. And now I've got a third. I'm actually gonna leave this blank because leaving a blank means that I can use the default pose. Zero is folded. One is our sort of funny looking fold pose. And then two is our regular pose. It's gonna default to folded. Now, I need to make a new blueprint that will house this. I'm going to right click, I'm going to make a new blueprint, and I'm just going to hit actor. We're here for actor, I'm going to call this screen, I'm going to call this BP underscore screen. I've got something basic here, I'm going to click on my default scene root and I'm going to add a skeletal mesh. Now that my skeletal mesh is here, I can add whatever I want, so I'm going to add my screen. And this is really important. I'm going to click over here on use animation blueprint and I'm going to set it to use animation blueprint if you haven't already. And then for the anim class, I'm going to find our screen. We auto generated the name. You might want to set it to something a little bit more specific. Uh, sorry, this tutorial is not a little bit more in depth. Now I want to proceed, but I want to show you something real quick. When I actually add this into the scene, it's going to be really annoying because everything is jammed into the ground. I can lift it up because it's a top down device and I can have it hang from upside down here which is pretty good, but I might also find that irritating. So let me show you how to offset the skeletal mesh. I can put this back down to the ground. I can also hit the end key to move it all the way down to the bottom with a path trace. And now I can click on my skeletal mesh here and I can just raise it. Now I could also do this inside my blueprint, but I wouldn't be able to judge how big the scene was. So I'm gonna leave that one alone. I'm gonna raise this exactly to the point that I want it. And then I'm gonna go back in here on the side, I'm gonna click apply instance changes to blueprint. If I go back into my blueprint now, you can see it's the exact appropriate height. This is a really nice trick for whenever you're trying to make something that's a little bit more level specific, but you still wanna apply it in the blueprint. Let's go into our event graph. We can begin to make our functionality here. Just cause this is a quick and simple tutorial. I'm gonna hook everything up using a reference to the keyboard. So I'm gonna grab the keyboard, right click, and I'm gonna think of the most obvious key that I could think of that the search will recognize. I'm gonna type in backspace, and then I'm gonna grab that. Now I can change anything I want. I can go over here and click backspace, and I can search for the key that I want, or I can also just click on this. You'll see the item will turn yellow, and then I can just hit the key which I want, which is tab. So you just see it change to tab. I could search for it as tab, or I could just click tab, which is really cool. So now that I have this, I want to start working with it. When this is pressed, I want to use a multi-gate. A multi-gate should help me step through a bunch of different options. So I'm going to add a pin to it. I'm going to make sure it's set to loop. 
The start index should be minus one. So it starts by moving to zero and then to one and then to two. I'm gonna need a reference to our animation blueprint. So how do I do that? I'm gonna grab my skeletal mesh and then I'm gonna type in anim instance. I'm gonna pull this out. I'm gonna go ahead and start typing the name of our blueprint interface. I'm gonna pull this out and I'm gonna start typing in toggle screen. And I can just pull this over here. Because we've made a blueprint interface, we don't have to cast. I'm gonna press Control D and I'm gonna duplicate this a couple of times. Or you can just click it and hit duplicate. And I'm gonna make sure the integer is different every time. We're gonna have zero, one, and two, just like our output pins. Now this is great, but the blueprint won't work right away. I want to make sure that everything is set up for us to be able to get inputs. So if I click on class defaults and I scroll down to input, I want to turn off the auto receive input and I want to change it to player zero just to be safe. Not all blueprints will immediately receive inputs. I'm going to plug this into every single one of my nodes and I'm going to hit compile. I'm going to press save and then I'm going to go over here and click and try this out for the first time. So as long as I'm clicked into my level, I can see my screen up here looking pretty cool. So I'm gonna press the tab key and I got nothing. However, on the second try, I got something. This makes total sense. The first pose was the default pose that started. I press it again and it drops down to the bottom. You can see we forgot to set a custom time on that one. So let's just mess with our timing. We change our outputs. I'm pressing control and I'm clicking to drag them quickly. I'll plug that one back into the top and this way we should have the correct order. And I'm gonna change my last blend time to include the smooth two second thing here. And now, when I click through, I've got it again. However, we're gonna have a small problem. One thing that you need to do, this is super important, to make sure that everything's running properly, you wanna hit this option called visibility based anim tick options. You wanna make sure it's set to always tick pose and refresh bones. And with that, you're good to go. This is really great for any kind of robotic rig. Let's say you wanted to make a platformer where at the last minute an arm extended in front of the character to be able to land, give them a landing pad as some sort of invisible bridge. I hope you found this helpful and thanks so much. If you're interested in stream screens, you can check out that video here. Here, mocap is hard. Ah, there, over, over there. It's over, it's, you get it, you get it. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine.